Hey friends, it's time for another virus vacation story. The title today is The Three Little Javelinas by Susan Lowell and illustrated by Jim Harris. This book may seem familiar to you and I want you to think about what it reminds you of as I'm reading. <clears throat> the Three Little Javelinas by Susan Lowell. Once upon a time, way out in the desert, there were three little javelinas. Javelinas are wild, hairy, southwestern cousins of pigs. Their heads were hairy, their backs were hairy, and their bony legs, all the way down to their hard little hooves, were very hairy. But their snouts were soft and pink. Here are their snouts. One day, the three little javelinas trotted away to seek their fortunes. In this hot, dry land, the sky was almost always blue. Steep purple mountains looked down on the desert where the cactus forest grew. Soon the little javelinas came to a spot where the path divided, and each one went a different way. The first little javelina wandered lazily along. He didn't see a dust storm whirling across the desert until it caught him. The whirlwind blew away and left the first little javelina sitting in a heap of tumbleweeds. Brushing himself off, he said, I'll build a house with them. And in no time at all, he did. Here's his house. Then along came a coyote. He ran through the desert so quickly and so quietly that he was almost invisible. In fact, this was only one of coyote's many magical tricks. He laughed when he saw the tumbleweed house and smelled the javelina inside. Mmm, a tender, juicy piggy, he thought. Coyote was tired of eating mice and rabbits. <clears throat> he called out sweetly, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, shouted the first javelina who had a lot of hair on his chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. And he huffed and he puffed and he blew the little tumbleweed house away. But in all the hollow baloo, the first little javelina escaped and went looking for his brother and sister. Coyote, who was very sneaky, tiptoed along behind. The second javelina walked for miles among giant cactus plants called saueros. They held their ripe red fruit high in the sky, but they made almost no shade and the little javelina grew hot. Then he came upon a Native American woman who was gathering sticks from inside a dried up cactus. She planned to use these long sticks called saguero ribs to knock down the sweet cactus fruit. The second javelina said, please, may I have some sticks to build a house? Hayu, she said, which means yes in the language of the desert people. When he was finished building his house, he lay down in the shade. Then his brother arrived, panting from the heat, and the second little javelina moved over and made a place for him. Pretty soon, Coyote found the Sayero rib house. He used his magic to make his voice sound just like another javelina's. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. But the little javelinas were suspicious. The second one cried, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Bah, thought Coyote, I am not going to eat your hair. Then Coyote smiled, showing all his sharp teeth. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and all the Sayero ribs came tumbling down. But the two little javelinas escaped into the desert. Still not discouraged, Coyote followed. Sometimes his magic did fail, but then he usually came up with another trick. The third little javelina trotted through beautiful palo verde trees with green trunks and yellow flowers. She saw a snake sliding by, smooth as oil. 
A hawk floated round and round above her. Then she came to a place where a man was making adobe bricks from mud and straw. The bricks lay on the ground, baking in the hot sun. <clears throat> the third little javelina thought for a moment and said, May I please have a few adobes to build a house? Si, sí, answered the man, which means yes in Spanish, the brickmaker's language. So the third javelina built herself a solid little adobe house, cool in summer and warm in winter. When her brothers found her, she welcomed them in and locked the door behind them. Coyote followed their trail. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. The three little javelinas looked out the window. This time, Coyote pretended to be very old and weak with no teeth and a sore paw. But they were not fooled. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, called back the third little javelina. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. He grinned, thinking of the wild pig dinner to come. Just try it, shouted the third little javelina. So Coyote huffed and puffed, but the adobe bricks did not budge. Again, Coyote tried, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. The three little javelinas covered their hairy ears, but nothing happened. The javelinas peeked out the window. The tip of Coyote's raggly tail whisked right past their noses. He was climbing upon the tin roof. Next, Coyote used his magic to make himself very skinny. The stovepipe, gasped the third little javelina. Quickly, she lighted a fire inside her wood stove. What a feast it will be, Coyote said to himself. He squeezed into the stovepipe. I think I'll eat them with red hot chili sauce. Whoosh, sizzle. Then the three little javelinas heard an amazing noise. It was not a bark. It was not a cackle. It was not a howl. It was not a scream. It was all of those sounds together. Yip, 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 yow! Away ran a puff of smoke shaped like a coyote. The three little javelinas lived happily ever after in the adobe house. And if you ever hear Coyote's voice way out in the desert at night, well, you know what he's remembering. The end. Can you howl like a coyote? Oh!